Hello, boys and girls. I hope you guys are doing good. Anxious to see you all. We love you all. We miss you all. <clears throat> We've got a good story out of the Bible today, out of the Old Testament, to uh, bring to you guys. We've got a, a special guest reader here that's going to do some reading for you. So we hope you guys enjoy it. We're going to read you the story of Moses and God allowing him to part the Red Sea so the Israelites could escape the Egyptians. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and let our guest reader here. And I'll try not to have too many questions as she reads through this. So I won't be like the interrupting cow. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go. Then Moses rushed his hand over, hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up the path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all night, turning the seabed into a dry land, so that people of oh, Israel walked through the middle of, of the sea on dry ground. What ground? Dry. Dry? Mm -hmm. In the middle of the sea? Mm-hmm. Okay. With walls of water on each side. Then the Egyptians, then the Egyptians, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and charioteers chased them into the middle of the sea. But just before dawn, the Lord looked down on the Egyptians' army from from the pillar of fire and view and cloud. And cloud, he threw their forces into total confusion. So he confused them so bad. They didn't know what was going on. He twisted their chariot wheels to make their chariots difficult to drive. Let's get out of here and away from these Israelites. The Egyptian shepherd, the Lord is fighting from, for them against Egypt. Who's fighting for them? The Lord was. Oh, the Lord was fighting for the Israelites against the Egyptians. When the Israelites had reached the other side, the Lord said to Moses, Raise your hand over hmm. the sea again. Raised his hand way up, didn't he? Then the water will rush back and cover the Egyptians and their chariots and charioteers. So as the sun began to rise, Moses raised his hand over the sea and... The water rushed back into the usual place. The Egyptians tried to escape, but the Lord swept them into the sea. How many of them was in there? I, don't know. I think we're going to find out. Keep going. Then the waters returned to cover all the chariots and charioteers into the entire army of Pharaoh. So, how many was it? Tell them how many it was. Mm -hmm. How many? The entire army of Pharaoh, the whole army of Pharaoh, not one was left out over on the beach looking, not one was left out over there fishing somewhere, the entire army of Pharaoh, right? Okay, keep going. Of all, of all the Egyptians who had chased the Israelites into the sea, not a single one survived. Not a single one, right? Not one survived. But the people of Israel had walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground as the water stood up like a, up like a wall on both sides. So what did God do there? He saved the people. And how did he do that? By, uh, By a path through the sea. And what do we call that? It starts with an M. Think about it. What does God do? He works what? Miracles. That was a miracle, right? So the Israelites were God's chosen people. The Egyptians were trying to kill his people. So it reminds me of the song. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. God was a waymaker. He made a way for the Israelites to get away from the Egyptians. The miracle was he parted the Red Sea so they could walk across on dry land. Dry land, right? That's what the story said, wasn't it? 
And he's a promise keeper because he promises to take care of his people. And he was their light in a time of darkness when they're standing looking at this great sea, great sea of water. They can't imagine any way that they're going to get out of it. God made a way for them to get across. In the middle of their worst time when they thought their lives were over and the Egyptians were going to kill them, God made a way. And he can make a way in our lives too. And he does every day. And God is still in the business of working miracles just as he did when the Egyptians were trying to get the Israelites. Right? He can do it then. He's still in the business of working miracles now. So, pretty cool story, huh? What was your favorite part? Mine was the dry ground. How many seas you think have dry ground on the bottom? None. But God can make them dry. At the command of His voice, He controls the waters and the seas, doesn't He? All right, guys, well, we hope you all enjoyed the, the story by our, our little helping reader here. We, uh, we miss you guys. We love you all. We hope that we can be back together with you again soon. So I know you guys are anxious to see us. We're anxious to see you all, too. So just hang tight through all this, and we'll be, again, be together again with you all soon. So we'll close out with prayer and... Uh, Look forward to seeing you guys again here really quick. Heavenly Father, we come today to thank you, Lord, for all the many blessings on our life, God. We thank you for things that are unmentionable, God, that you do that we don't even know you're doing, Lord Jesus. But we just thank you, God, for your gracious and merciful. Lord, we thank you for all these young ones, God, and all those under the sound of my voice, God. May you always be the promise keeper and the way maker that we know you are, God. Work miracles in our life, God. Have a calling for them, Lord. Something for them to do, God, for the uplifting of your kingdom, God. Be with them. Lead them, God, and protect them, Lord Jesus. Look over our nation, God, and protect us all. Cure this pestilence, Lord, just as quickly and expeditiously as you can, God. We just ask you to always be with us. Find us in your favor and your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, that's all we have for you all. We hope you enjoy it. And uh, I guess we'll look forward to seeing them soon, huh? Bye.